one of the elders. Mm -hmm. He he was he was a little younger, uh -huh. but um, he was the one that was favored. Okay, that was because favored. of his study. Yes, going sir. To Egypt. Yes, study. sir. So in '75, he he took over, and Minister yes, Farrakhan sir. was uh, backing him up. Yes, sir. What happened after that? If you could briefly speak on that, because we got a few minutes left. And um, what was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's vision, to your knowledge, of where the nation should go as far as leadership and theology? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, um, in, the, in the time that we have left, I'll try to be uh, mm -hmm. as short as possible. Mm -hmm. the, we believe, of course, uh, those of us who are with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, we are with him because... As you can see, we believe that that is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad desired for mm -hmm. um, his followers. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, the uh, Imam, may Allah be pleased with him, a uh, beautiful human being, and, you know, did a tremendous work that is still going on where Islam is concerned. Uh, I respect his community, I respect the members of the community, and I believe they are better examples of Muslims uh, than if we want to use, uh, and I put in quotes, Islamic orthodoxy or traditional mm -hmm. Islam. Right. I do think they are a beautiful example mm -hmm. of uh, what Muslims should be like. I also think that the relationship between the followers of Imam Orthodine Muhammad and the followers of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan coming from the same root, but, and of course, having a disagreement uh, from the basis of that root, but yet not warring with each other. Again, this is a, another good example that, again, well, you know, I think if you're talking about examples of Muslims, you have the enemy who's able to foster uh, battles between Shiite and Sunni where you have both on uh, different sides uh, yelling Allahu Akbar, trying to kill each other. Shedding blood. Shedding blood. Mm -hmm. Which is strictly forbidden. Which is strictly forbidden. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I'm trying to come at it a certain kind of way to show that even what we may not like or what was uh, hurtful to many yet was ordained by Allah and guided by Allah. And we who are with him believe that he wanted and desired us to continue uh, following or growing his teachings under his leadership. Now, there is... And, and, and I'm grateful for YouTube because there's a lot um, out there. And, of course, uh, we have many tapes and videos and things here that we distribute. Um, I've been doing that for quite some time, many years myself. But, you know, the minister, I have always admired him for his courage, not only standing up against our enemies, but I also admired his courage in that and he teaches us never to be intellectual cowards, mm -hmm. not to be surface dwellers. And what you will find about the messengers and prophets of Allah and wise men who would have the responsibility of uplifting and guiding communities, they always had, all of them had ways in which they would give guidance mainly in pictures or parables or 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 uh metaphorical making it plain you know mm -hmm. and what would happen is you would grasp that and then over time if you are courageous enough to keep going down into the picture that you were given you will keep on extracting truth keep on extracting truth so minister farrakhan is not a coward he had enough courage to keep going into the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and many who criticize him it's not that he's doing anything wrong but many are still dwelling 
on the surface, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad never wanted us just to dwell on the surface of what he gave. And I, I can recall a time in which he was telling us that even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called him when he was given a particular uh, talk on the history of Jesus. And he said the Honorable Elijah Muhammad called him and, and got on him and said, Brother, don't teach that like I taught it 40 years ago. I want you to teach the meaning of it. So even then, he was encouraging the minister to uh, go deeper into what he gave us because although on the surface it seemed quite simple and it was and it was a good first step to get us going forward mm -hmm. but at the same time many of us got to a certain point or most of us I would say and got comfortable and we will still do that today mm -hmm. uh, that's just one of the struggles that you have to deal with when you're trying to get a people up that uh, we're working to get resurrected but you know some days we're on it some days we're yeah. not mm -hmm. so that was the thing that the minister has done and continues to do to further the work of the honorable Elijah Muhammad building upon what he taught the, he, the imam at that time uh, according to his understanding he also thought that he needed to uh, take the nation of Islam in a direction that he felt was taking us onward and upward, you understand. But at the same time, the minister who was with him at that time and worked and labored with him, stayed with him until he felt that, okay, this turn that you have made is going outside of what I believe the Father wanted us to keep going because he never wanted, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad never, ever wanted us to fall behind or follow the rest of the, uh, as we've used the language today, the traditional world of Islam. He said that Allah came to set us on top. And, you know, he meant that taking us from the bottom and setting us on top, not going through uh, the rigors or all of what some would say is tradition or ritual or however you need to frame it because many of the people that we would turn around to pattern ourselves after were those who were already off the path. As Muhammad ibn Abdullah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, had already said, three generations after me will be of me. After that, I cannot vouch for. You see? So, he never wanted us to go follow a people that he believed many of them had went off course. So why go follow them when Allah came to make us the preeminent example and leaders of the world to start a new kingdom of his here on earth. So we who stand with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan today, you know, we love him. We love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and true followers of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan love Muslims all over this world. And we love them and, uh, and are grateful for the great and many sacrifices that they made. But we love our teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and just because some may have a misunderstanding, you know, that as best we can do, we, you know, kindly request you uh, do it in an intelligent way, but you just can't attack the man who has become the fountainhead of our faith and not expect an uh, appropriate response because we love him and we would not be where we are today if it were not for him and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad brother would have been written out of history uh, by now we would not know uh, the great and many works that he did so we thank Allah for both of these men and um, as a believer I am faithful that Allah will do as he promised and he will settle all the differences that any Isla in the Islamic community he will settle all our differences that we have and with his help we will continue 
working uh, according to our belief in him as our uh, spiritual teacher and guide in right. this hour. We've got about six or seven minutes uh, left. Is there any um, misconceptions or anything you want to clear uh, you know, for the world to see about the nation, about uh, Minister Farrakhan, brother, 84 years old, still going strong. Yeah. Oh, such an inspiration. And a lot of people, whether they want to admit it or not, whether you're in the conscious movement, uh, whether you claim a certain sect or following of Islam, Hebrew, Israelite, I mean, it circles back to a lot of it is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I mean, that's just, that's just a fact. I mean, I mean, of course, we have, you know, the honorable Marcus Garvey, you know, if you want to start talking about black consciousness yeah. and all that. But I'm talking about in this present day and age, uh, a lot of people's awakening, my awakening came from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Is there anything you want to clear up in the next uh, five minutes, we have about five minutes? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Well, again, brother, I thank you again for the uh, opportunity to share our views uh, in an open forum. And, um, and you're, you're a brother who, you know, your heart is in the right place, so you're able to pull up uh, good conversation. But I would, I would like to leave uh, those who are listening uh, with this, you know, and as you mentioned, the minister is 84 years old. We were just blessed to uh, be with him uh, less than a week ago in Washington, D.C. Um, at the 40th, 44th anniversary celebration of uh, Pastor Reverend Willie Wilson, um, who that was a great example of, of brotherhood, love, and commitment with a brother who many see as a, a Christian. And um, it, it was just a beautiful experience. And before that, at a uh, training session in uh, Illinois the week before that, and during the same time of that training session being with us, he, he dipped out and went to spend time with our brother Ice Cube and mm -hmm. supporting his work uh, with the new basketball league. And, yes. mm -hmm. uh, and I just saw recently posted in an interview um, some of excerpts of his conversation that he's had with our brother, Brother Jay-Z, mm -hmm. at, after the release of his new album. And I'm just saying all that to say, even at 84 years old, you know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a man who loves us deeply. Mm -hmm. And he does many things sometimes that you know, in, in terms of his work ethic that is really injurious to himself. And I just would wish that everybody would take the time to, you know, go to our site, NOI.org, uh, also to take the time to visit um, a 58-week lecture series that the minister recently did. That's 58, 58 weeks called The Time and What Must Be Done. Hmm. And if you would watch the over one year uh, of him coming out, sharing and spilling his heart and his mind and what God has blessed him to learn over a year's period every week, it will give you a much better appreciation of him and how much he loves us and how much he wants to teach us and guide us through the twists and turns. And I believe if the listeners would take some time and watch these things, not only will they get a greater glimpse into him, they will also get a greater view of God's hand on him because you will see in that many, 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 many predictions that we are facing, brother, as we speak, too many even to mention, of course, in the three minutes that we have left. But I would implore those who are serious about becoming people to help their own people to seriously consider going, watching, and studying so that you can learn from a great brother how to do what you believe God has placed on your heart to do as I believe he's placed on my heart and I believe that you believe that what he's placed on your heart he's a man worthy of study of how to 
get after and help the people that you love. I would encourage everybody to do that. And also, y'all have uh, weekly messages on NOI.org yes. and then go on the webcast. That's right. Um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his youngest son, Brother Ishmael. Is that Ishmael. Young, yeah, he's doing a wonderful job and you yes, have sir. other ministers. And I hope to see you up there on on Sunday on the rostrum. Oh, uh, brother, I'd have a yeah. stroke, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can handle it. You can handle it. You, you're ready for it, brother. So that's NOI.org. That's right. Hit the live webcast and you can get timely messages there. That's right. So, um, again, this is Minister Amon of Moss 34 here in uh, Durham, North Carolina, a personal friend of mine and my supplier of bean pies. Ah, oh yes, my supplier right. of bean pies, is a wonderful brother. He's doing great work here in Durham and he has some wonderful brothers who helps him out. Uh, so anyone that may be listening or watching this, if you wanna get a message here in this local area, come to Moss 34 on Driver Street. Again, this is Brother Sharif. Go to the Hour of Power, Sharif Hamid subscribe and share subscribe and share because this ain't about me it's about trying to educate our people and i'm just trying to bring in different theologies and ideologies i'm not trying to pull anyone in any one particular way whatever's best for you so i leave you in peace as i came again with my brother minister aman assalamu alaikum to my muslim family praise the lord to my christian family hotep to my black conscious family and shalom to my Hebrew Israelite family. What's good to you in the streets? Peace. Peace.